You're listening to The Fat Cast, live from the studio with Colin Reynolds. Good afternoon. You're watching the Fat Cast uh, here with your host Colin Reynolds, and today my special guest is uh, Tasha Zapala. Oh, how's it going? How are you doing, Tash? <laughs> really well. Excellent. <laughs> um, you, I, you're always well. It seems to be the case. <laughs> every every time I've seen you, you you're just so happy, and um, oh, nice. <laughs> you just got the best attitude. I just sort of say that. Oh, now the the, the piece you. the piece you played here. I, I heard you play that also at um, at Mona just 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 recently. Ah uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's the name of that piece? Um, that's uh, I think it's just called Sparrow. Um, Sparrow. Yeah, um, I was living down towards Allen's Rivulet, and there was a whole bunch of crows that would sort of 
uh, sit outside my window all day when I was studying and um, they'd always come and steal all the chicken food and I would try really hard to stop them from sure. from taking the food. So I was like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, Sparrows. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, I'm, I imagine someone must have compared your work to like a gypsy jazz type of thing. Oh, I wish, but I they I don't uh oh, they're just on a whole nother level of talent and uh the chords that they use, um and just the skill level. It's You use some pretty sophisticated <laughs> chords yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, I think I, I do um borrow some of their chord shapes, but uh every time I listen to like Django or any of the old gypsy jazz and like I just should quit. <laughs> Jan- Django is amazing, of course. You know the oh. story about him as a child? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how we uh, literally like the caravan he was in caught fire. Um, there was like a fire in his village and he barely escaped. But, you know, he eventually escaped with a deformed hand. Yeah. So, you know, he only had like those two fingers to literally. And he, the most incredible arpeggios and um uh, he apparently invented the minor ninth chord because he basically if you know he just did made made a third and then put his clump of skin (laughs) on the fretboard that was just the shape it made now i don't know if that's true but that's how i've heard the story certainly one of the uh, earliest people to to popularize in recorded music that minor ninth chord Oh, for sure. Oh. <laughs> My theory is terrible. I'm like, where's the nine? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's just like the two that are not too up, right? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. That's um. Awesome. And uh, have you seen, uh, what's it, an animated movie, French animated movie, uh, made maybe 15 to 20 years ago called the Triplets of Belleville. No, I haven't like, seen You've got to watch that sometime, even if just to watch the intro. Oh. Because they've got like a um like a version of Minor Swing oh. and like an animated Django. Oh. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, that's awesome. Now uh, I do remember a while ago you had been doing like a lot of busking. Yeah. And that's like where you've gotten like a lot of obviously live performing experience. Are you still doing the busking? Um, oh, not so much since COVID. Um, just uh, just trying to keep everyone safe for sure. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. So you still enjoy doing that? Oh, I love it. Yep. Yeah, I do miss it a lot. So I hope to be back when it's safe and yeah, when it's good for everyone. Yep. So, sure. Yeah. The COVID situation definitely does make it hard. Absolutely. Yeah. So has that affected, um, you know, any live gigs you've had booked or? Uh, definitely. Uh, we've been so lucky in Tassie the last, though through the, throughout the whole pandemic, we've been so lucky. And so I haven't really been affected as much as um, lots of people I know in other parts of, of Australia or overseas, but uh, definitely a few cancellations, a few reschedulings. But Like recently, um, I mean, Today, uh, uh, the news might have been out yesterday, I'm not sure, but uh, I just found out today that uh, Pangea had been uh, postponed indefinitely. Surely yes. are you were playing there? Um, uh, I was scheduled to play at the Bendigo Blues and Roots oh, Festival that same weekend. Yeah. Um, so, and that one's been postponed until November. So wow. Fingers crossed. So. See the fire got cancelled. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know that was that's pretty devastating for a lot of for a lot of folk musicians. Absolutely. Um, it just seems like left and right, and venues are are closing up. Yeah. Like it, the repub now is no longer doing Mondays and Tuesdays. It's just shut for that time. Oh wow. Maybe up to thirty other businesses are actually, at least for the moment, closed their doors for training. Oh my gosh! It's pretty heartbreaking, and you know a number of those were live music venues. Abs- yeah, it's yeah, it is a yeah. I I, I do I don't know what to say. No, to I know there's, a, there's there's like nothing really good to say about it. It's just like well, yeah. let's just hope we can get past it soon. 
whatever that takes, you know? Absolutely. And but I do feel that the creative community, like, is, and the hospitality industry, like, the way that we've sort of moved and transformed in the last two years and, the, sure. like, the way that artists and the community have, like, still continued to support live shows, I've definitely noticed that um, people have been, the shows that have happened, they've been so appreciative. And sure. that's been, yeah, really getting to fall in love with performing all over again, which has been really nice. I do remember, um, so we had like when there was the initial breakout and then there was the initial shutdown and then there was the first sort of reopening yeah. and I rem people were absolutely mad to get out and they were just <laughs> like, yeah, we're out, this is so great, you know, <laughs> fucking party hard. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I'm looking forward to that happening again. Hopefully it does. Yeah. The day will come. The day will come. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, so um, uh, tell me a bit about your influences. Oh, um, gosh. I, I've been really lucky to spend uh, a, a lot of time a lot of the time performing, I've gotten to travel quite a lot. And sure. so if, uh, lots of people I've met have really inspired me and introduced me to um, lots of different music. Uh, really have really loved uh, New Orleans and uh, America, lots of uh, jazz and blues. Um, yeah, and then just also just friends as well, like learning so much by playing with other people and... Uh, just collaborating in other projects, just learn so much. So, sure. Yeah, really grateful. Um, like uh, last time you were in this studio, you recorded with Tiff. Yes. Um, have uh, you guys done anything uh, since then? Um. Uh, yes. Uh, so Tiff appears on uh, the last two albums that I've brilliant that I've released, and um, she's also written a, an opera. For, she wrote an opera. Yes. Wow. An opera for puppets. Um. So her, pro yeah, that's been awesome to watch and to. Uh, she plays harp and guitar on that, and there's a whole bunch of guest artists. So that's she's just amazing. Excellent. <laughs> so your albums. What are the album titles? Uh, uh the last one was All at Once, and the one before that was uh, Rest Up Robots. Uh, written when I was uh, just prior to COVID and uh, was writing the songs and sort of traveling between Tassie and Victoria and South Australia, Queensland and over to New Zealand yeah. and got back to Tassie and we locked down and I finished the album. So All right. Now, yeah. So if someone wants to get hold of those, how can they do that? Um, uh, through it. Uh, through streaming platforms or Bandcamp is one of my favorites sure. for uh, for independent artists and also for connecting and hearing the stories about uh, the albums and uh, it's just my favorite. Great. <laughs> Highly recommend. Have you got a story about a song you could tell us? Oh, um, golly. I think lots of the songs were written... Uh, when I was living down in sort of Alan's Rivulet and so I was... Deep in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just stunning down there. Um, well, it's, it's just mountains and hills and it's really green. And so the last couple of years I've been doing a lot with field recordings. Yeah. So... Um, using nature sounds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so trying to incorporate those in the recorded work and... Uh, just sort of responding to environmental sounds as well and the way that the sounds around us will sort of trigger memories and using that to sort of um, – so when you hear a sound, your brain sort of remembers it and then when you rehear it in, in a new context, your brain still remembers where it heard it the first time and so there's this like overlapping and superimposition of space and so I think – a lot of the album was sort of written in this time when time sort of lost a lot of relevance because we were just, everything was just paused. And sure. so, and then it was just about sort of exploring the memories associated with sound. 
right. Yeah. <laughs> Exploring the memories associated with sound. I think so. <laughs> yeah, because like the ne- then this ne- next layer you're talking about, you're not only remembering when you first heard it, but you're remembering the last time you remembered it. Yes. Yeah. Which by nature has to be a different memory. Yes. And quite often a different space. So, um, yes, sometimes that might be, and a totally different time space. So you might hear just some bugs and it will remind you of the other side of the country and when you were growing up and when you were small. And then you also remember hearing them somewhere really, really far away. And so you've got all of these spaces that are all competing with each other. Um, And just trying to use that to just sort of contextualize whatever's happening in the present to sort of weave it all together instead of having these like fighting fighting memories and places that are trying to force each other out, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um so uh, so Tiff appears on this album. Yes. Yes. Um any any other musicians? Is this a bit of a collaboration or Ah, uh, yes. Um, so uh, Tiff appears uh, with her harp playing and her vocals, and then there's uh, Jackie Collier um, oh, yes. comes and does some backing vocals as well, and Andrew Legg is playing bass on right. one of the songs. And Dave... Not piano. No. <laughs> I was, he's too good. For, <laughs> <laughs> and Dave Steele comes and plays um, accordion and wow. lap, lap steel guitar. Yeah. The lap steel, that's an interesting instrument, isn't it? Ah, oh, just stunning. Just uh, earlier this year, um, um, we had a, a performer uh, come down from the mainland oh. with her act. Um, and so it's her and her music partner. I don't think they're married, but also her daughter and her daughter's husband. Oh. So you've got, um, oh, God, I hope I'll get this right. Joan Russell, is that her name? Oh, Does that name ring a bell? Oh, I'm not too God, sure. I hope I got the name right. She yes. was so good. She's a bit, it would be so embarrassing if I got it wrong, but she's a bit like, um, a bit like Australia's Dolly Parton. Oh. Okay, she's been, like, inducted into the, the Country Music Hall of Fame in, in the USA. And oh. anyway, her... Her dude plays one of these lap steels. And um, the number of moving parts in those things. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's Just... absolutely crazy. So I, I guess they're not all the same. But so he's had essentially the two, do you still call them fretboards? <laughs> oh, those double fretboards. That's right. That's crazy. And um, so he had on his knee to press that way was like, a B bender on one of the fretboards and um, to press it the other way was like just a, a regular tremolo on on the other fretboard. And the same thing. He had pedals and these knee things. Anyway, it was terribly complex. Wow. Wow. Joan Russell. So I, I got it. Oh. That's a name. <laughs> I, 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 I got this feeling it's not, and I'm gonna get roasted. <laughs> oh, Which was fantastic. Um, and she was, I don't know, sixty-five years old or something like oh, that. Oh, beautiful. You know, and um, you know that was that was, that was a really great act. Oh, that's. But yeah, lap steel and guitar to Sonny Moore who does the um. The bulk of the, the guitaring and you know he's a fantastic player too, and her you know daughter sings as well. Oh, golly! I wish I saw it. <laughs> I swear I got the name wrong. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> I hope I remember it. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, I you know not I'm not a country music head. You know, like I don't have. A, you know, it'll be randomly, hopefully it's right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and which, because I mean, like, even though, so my father, he he loves country music. Oh. And so he kind of killed country music for me when I was young. Oh. Because he likes, like, super specific. I mean, he still likes some of the older stuff too, but he really likes 
like a modern country. And without trying to sort of, you know, demean any kind of music, old music's fantastic, like except for modern country. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. But, yeah, no, I found, it, I found that kind of music really hard to get my headspace into. Oh. Mostly because of the kinds of things they sing about that I find it hard to relate to. You know, pickup trucks and machine guns and worshipping Jesus and oh. whatever it is the modern country is about. But, yeah, like older country, uh, you know, even like Willie Nelson, oh. <laughs> you know, it's it's only a, like a sidestep from folk. Like it's another kind of folk music, you know. It's just folk music from another spot. Absolutely. Mm. And there's yeah. a massive crossover between folk and country. Definitely, yeah, definitely both telling stories and uh, and just passing things on, I feel like. Just the recording of experience and yeah, uh, um, and like you know Teresa Dixon. Yes. Like for example, <laughs> she's like one of those artists that kind of straddles folk and country, uh, uh, like that joining gap in there somewhere. Absolutely. You know, and her music's brilliant. Oh, she's stunning. Absolutely love Teresa's work. Oh, and devastated for Teresa. Lee Kernaghan was cancelled. Oh, yes. Hopefully it will be rescheduled. I hope so. I so. mean, because that that's a big act to come to Tassie. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my heart goes out to her for... Because she was going to open for Luke. Yeah. So, um, oh. kind of, once again, that, you know, that big dark COVID cloud. Oh. Another time... There will be, there's there's plenty of time, so I think, yeah. There's got to be brighter days ahead, right? Absolutely. And, yeah, I think sometimes it's good to rest, but I think a, a lot of the musicians I know have just used, if there have been cancellations, to just, um, yeah, to just out use another outlet and so whether it's writing or recording or painting or um yeah writing stories so i think there's always creativity there's always something you can do to further your music without necessarily playing live definitely for sure just like a, a, they say a carpenter all right when a carpenter's out of work he should be sharpening his tools <laughs> right ah <laughs> oh, that's a good one it's a great analogy because <laughs> it's like yeah you got to you're a musician. Once again, you've got tools. Sharpen those tools. Yeah. Absolutely. Or, you know, just write. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, good time for writing. So, yeah. And there's, uh, however much you had to write it about before, now there's an extra thing you can write about. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. A whole new, a whole new world. You know, I've really only seen one, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty and it's just my lack of uh, exposure to it, but I've only seen one real uh, COVID uh, song come out. Oh. And this was called, um, if I can even remember, it's the, the band is uh, Pussifier, um, you know, oh. Maynard Keenan's other, he's the tool singer. And, oh. his, and Pussifier is like his, his next project. And, um, oh, look, I can't even remember the can't even remember the name of the song. This is shocking. This is shocking. Oh. It, it, was, it was years ago now when it came out, <laughs> but it's like it's it's really about the pandemic, and um, the music video is all about like these guys like skating through the streets and they're like there's no one anywhere and um, and the music is really unusual. It's just like kind of composed of like bleeps and bloops. But yeah, um, it was. Um, that's 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 that, that's the only one that I saw that was overtly about this pandemic. Yeah. Um, but I expect we're gonna see more, surely. It was like it, this isn't something that just popped up and then disappeared again. It's, it's like this is years now we've been dealing with this. Definitely. And as you said, we have been like in Tasmania in the last few years. We've basically been living as if it never existed. <laughs> yeah. Like, Not yeah. up until now, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's been, yeah, definitely. There's been some awesome Australian albums, though, um, that weren't directly, I think, about the pandemic, but then 
um, we're just writing in response to it, I guess. Like the Courtney Barnett's Things Take Time, Take Time. Oh, I think sure. Ray Street was all about just looking down the street and hiding out in her apartment. Okay, great. Yeah. I think Lawrence English as well um, re-released one of his albums uh, using field record. It was like a field recording album that he wrote when he was traveling and then he re visited it when he was in lockdown and he was just like the difference between where I was when I wrote this and where I am now is just so intense. Right. Yeah. And Daniel Rawlins um, wrote an awesome pandemic single as well. Sure. He's down in uh, Franklin. Highly recommend. So here you go, this library list of <laughs> examples. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and the art will get us through. <laughs> the art, definitely. Oh, it'd be nice if um, it'd be nice if the government kind of respected the art a little bit more, oh, right? No. Um, that's a depressing subject to get on. I just I can't look at it. I just... <laughs> you know, you know who was at Mona yesterday? Oh. Australian cricket team. Oh. <laughs> and they're like sitting out on the lawn sinking beers and it's like oh. yeah that's right guys fucking come and enjoy our shit <laughs> oh, okay. yeah that is tough anyway I mean I'm probably uh, meaner on them than I need to be not that they would care but it's not really the player's fault that the society elevates them above everything else but that's just the that's just the society we live in. Uh, you know, one day, you know, could be brighter days again. Things could change. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, well, that's probably all the time we've got today. Beautiful. Uh, thank you very much for coming in and playing for us. No, thank you. It's wonderful. It was, thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the name of the country performer. Yes. <laughs> Joan Russell. Is it Joan Russell? I'm going to make sure find out and I'll write it in the description. <laughs> okay. Other than that, um, uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>